Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which is of special significance, certainly to me and to many people. It's about a particular man who I've had a great admiration for, um, and obviously never met the, the uh, person concerned. But this book is the first statement we've had as a biography about his life, and I think he was a very special man. The book is called The Great Escaper, and it's about the life and death of Roger Bushell, who was um, the mastermind behind The Great Escape. It's got a subtitle, Love, Betrayal, Big X, and The Great Escape. <clears throat> it's being written by Simon Pearson, and he's brought together a lot of information from uh, the Bushell archive, which has now been made available to him and is held at the Imperial War Museum. The book's been published by Hodder and Stoughton in association with the Imperial War Museums. Um, my wife and I talked about this book. I've written the main review and I've given it the title Roger Bushell, a great intelligence asset. Let's hope the government will one day explain what really happened and the escape's impact on the war. Now, I've written this review from the point of view of the intelligence work that, that clearly took place and uh, many people will be very familiar with the general um, story and what happened. Uh, but I think it's important from the outset to set out exactly what this book is about because it deals with this man and he was a very important man in my view. There's the front of the book, it's a hardback. There's the side, the spine, and then there's the back. And obviously the, the key to all of this is the great escape itself. Inside you've got the front inside cover, the dust sheet there, with a nice little statement about Roger, and then there's a piece about the author at the back. Now if I start at the back, you can see there are some, there's in fact um, a note about Hodder and Stoughton, which I will just uh, talk about very briefly and show you. Then you've got a detailed index at the back. The book's uh, 430 odd pages long. After the index you've got a huge number on the notes and sources. This has been put together as a really superb uh, piece of craftsmanship in my view uh, because obviously this is the definitive work on, on what Roger did. Uh, obviously the bibliography itself as you can see is, is vast and I'm sure many people would have read the um, a lot of the book's concern. There's a picture acknowledgement as well about various pictures which we'll have a look at. And there are text acknowledgements from all the other people who've written books about The Great Escape or um, Operation 200. Then you've got uh, various acknowledgements, all the people who he, he saw in writing this book. There's an epilogue which I'll talk about at the end which is, is in many ways quite sad um, because that's the only looking at the whole book, that's the only area where there are one or two people who criticised him. Um, in my view, totally wrongly, but there again, you will always get a bit of criticism. There's a nice picture of Roger there, and, and that that's one will be an everlasting uh, memory for many people, I'm sure. There are lots of other pictures. Uh, there's a very gaunt picture of him towards the end of his life. Um, you've got there's other pictures there, which we'll talk about in a minute. If we go further back, you've got some of the information about his um, flying activities, his last entry. Then again, nice pictures of the Royal Air Force and his activities there. All his friends. And then his earlier days as a, an excellent skier and uh, his undergraduate life and so forth. And then again, there's some picture of his family there. And if we go to the front of the book, um, there's Simon Pearson's front cover there. Then you've got, it's dedicated to the memory of um, both Roger Bushell and Lady Georgiana uh, Mary Curzon. And then you've got the list of the uh, chapters. And then you've got there, and then you've got a map of Germany, which you can see there. Which, For those of you who don't know it, will we'll give you some idea of uh, where he was during the period of his imprisonment. And then that's a prelogue to, pre prologue rather, to start it. But I think for people coming to this subject a hundred years or so after um, his uh, birth, and a very long time, 75 years after the events took place, I'm recording this 
um, review in the summer of uh, 2015 and there are very few people left who um, knew about The Great Escape who are still actually alive. Two who actually took part are still alive as I record this, the rest have gone. But I've been very fortunate to meet some of the people concerned and it's been a great privilege uh, having myself served in the army and also worked for the Royal Air Force to have been able to visit all the RF stations in this country and to get some idea of how important this particular operation uh, at Stadlov 3 was. Um, whatever one says, there's an awful lot of information that hasn't come out yet and I'm going to refer to that in the review. This is what we say anyway, most people are familiar with the story of the Great Escape in the, for basically from the book written by Paul Brickhill, who was an Australian. He was a journalist and he wrote a really good book. Uh, he was eventually permitted to publish it in 1950, because there was a block for five years. And of course the blockbuster film uh, came out in 63, and as Sidney Dow said, it was a good film, uh, but it was a film nonetheless. And Sydney, of course, very charitable about that. Other people haven't been. But um, the point is that the story has come out, having been kept effectively under wraps for some time, for good reason, I hasten to add at the time, because of trials that took place in Germany and the tracking down of the people who murdered Roger and uh, his colleagues. Now, what most people do not realise, of course, are the surprising efforts made by um, the government at the end of the war initially to prevent publication of the story and the continued secrecy which is still going on surrounding what went on after the escape in March 1944 because D-Day was coming and the end of the war was approaching it was clear the Germans were losing and even at the time of the great escape I understand that the uh, order not to escape had not actually been given so there was still quite an appetite, even until uh, Operation 200, that there was um, a duty by officers to escape if they could, not, of course, uh, other ranks. But I think it's very important to bear that in mind because there was an order later on that was advising the POWs to stay where they were until um, they would be... Um, liberated. Now Anthony Eden made a statement in the House of Commons committing the government, the British government, to find and punish the murderers of the 50M and including uh, Roger who'd been involved in the escape. He was Foreign Secretary at the time and that um, commitment was carried out and there's a book on the subject and uh, there were trials and people were executed for what they had done. Now the great escaper, this book, is the first full biography of Roger Bushell um, and it's his family that we must thank for allowing us to see more pictures of him, to get some idea of who he was and to see a lot of information that was hitherto unavailable. I've also seen some film of him too which is quite delightful in some of the television programmes that have been made. It's an uplifting statement I think, this book, of what can be achieved against the greatest odds and the such sad turn of events thrown in uh, along the way, all of which are unfortunately true because this book is very accurate in my view. Pearson's work I think will remain the definitive account uh, for many years to come until the remaining official papers are eventually released, possibly in the middle of this century or later. Um, that's a question of whether if, if they're going to be released at all because I think the public should be allowed to see what really happened but I suspect it's going to take some considerable time even now before we know the full uh, picture of what happened. What I found about this book was there was a lot of stuff that has come out which was hitherto on either classified or it was only speculation and clearly there are within the files within the security services as a whole there will be a lot of information which you won't see. But what Pearson has done is he's produced an excellent well-researched and documented account of what is a most remarkable man uh, taken from the papers from the Imperial War Museum Bushel Archive, which is now available, and of course substantial interviews. The thing that's always come out to me about what uh, Roger did as Big X was the huge amount of uh, attention to detail which I would expect a barrister at law to have in any event, and it certainly showed itself with great security against the odds, and being able to achieve something really fascinating, absolutely, in my view, magnificent. 
What we have, though, with the biography is a much more rounded picture now of Roger as a man, the most useful, useful portrait, in my view, as so few people, uh, as I say, remain alive who knew him. And obviously there are various smatterings of uh, this story which have appeared in other books, but this is the first full account we have of him. Although he was, in Brickhill's book, effectively the, the uh, major feature, right at the beginning of the book anyway, and runs all the way through, but so many other people were involved. But Roger had that special something. I mean, the classic is when he um, was actually had escaped and he saw one of his fellow escapees and just squeezed his arm just to give him a bit of um, encouragement. I thought that was a particularly uh, interesting and um, heartwarming thing to do just before, of course, he was shot. Now, Brickhill had much trouble, as I say, publishing this book. Um, they nobbled and probably faked dispatches, they being presumably government officials, originating initially from Sweden, which I've seen and printed in the Daily Telegraph, um, using aliases like Wing Commander Smith to try and explain what had happened, because I don't think many people could really believe initially that Germans would actually do what they did. Um, obviously it's, it's caused a little bit of a problem with the build-up of some silly myths about Operation 200, and the question really is, what the security services are going to let us have because as I've indicated only two of the escapers are now actually alive and disclosure I think would be fascinating to read in due course it will be up to the government but there again there's so much that we don't get told and it's only after all of us are dead um, that in fact historians in the future will get some idea of really what happened and unfortunately with this particular operation so many things went wrong unfortunately uh, but there again that is um, that is life and that is one of the things again the film brought that out and I thought it did a very good job notwithstanding it had to bring it had to composite events and people because so many people were of course involved MI9 as I say will we hope one day open up some of its files especially on uh, the early part of Roger's imprisonment in Germany, uh, because I think the public should know about the man and what he was doing, certainly at Dalag Luft, which, uh, Dalag Luft, which I, clearly is something that was relatively new to me, and I just wonder how much the Germans knew about that, uh, because there must have been some understanding about, of, about what was going on with both Wingsday and Roger Bushel at Dalag Luft. Now, the other uncomfortable issues which remain are that has been the lack of a proper award for Roger Bushell. Um, that's covered very um, in a very sensitive way by Pearson, but it's something that's always concerned me because it was evident that he deserved something more than just a mention in it dispatches. Possibly a DSA, it's not for me to say, but I certainly feel um, that he didn't get the sort of recognition that he should have had, and I believe that that's something, again, um, that should be borne in mind because the important thing to bear in mind here is not necessarily the substantial loss of life, but the fact that Operation 200 was a success in that three airmen got home. And I can remember the 50th anniversary of the um, Great Escape at uh, St Clemendane's Church when uh, there were, uh, Sidney Dows had arranged the, uh, this memorial service and the important point there was that in fact it was a success and there was a cost but in war there's always going to be that and in anybody who served will know that that is that is what you have to face up to what Bushell did for us then is the question I really wanted to look at when I read the book it's been partly explained 100 years after his birth 70 odd years after the breakout of the war um, as I said, there's still a lot of things missing in this story, especially covering some of the intelligence aspects. The first time we're starting to hear a little bit more, apart from all the rumour and the hints in Brickhill's book and a few of the other books, we now get a much better account of what motivated Roger with his relationship with uh, a number of, of uh, ladies and that some of the really difficult things that happened to him. Um, obviously the time in Prague is particularly important. It could be a wonderful film if you think about it because of the nature of what he was doing for all that period of time and the fact that um, the information there is still hidden. Obviously I understand the reasons for that but I would like at the end of the day to know a little bit more.
I'm sure we could be told that we all are all adults and we actually pay all the bills at the end of the day. One thing though is for sure and that is The Great Escape will not go away as a story. Um, as a child, I mean 10 years, I was born 10 years after The Great Escape took place, a little bit more than that, and um, I must say that it strikes me as being um, a magnificent achievement. To meet the people involved has been a real rare privilege. To go to some of these places where the events took place uh, has been also a great eye-opener for me. It's a valiant story, goes to the very hearts of courage and inspiration which was displayed by the uh, participants, uh, very great people in my view, and um, given now to, so, to many readers of new generations who are interested in military history, and more than that, it's about the sort of guts, the sheer strength, uh, because the people who did this work actually knew what Hitler stood for and why, because they were Royal Air Force personnel, they knew what the Germans were up to all the way through. And I don't, I've never bought the argument that people didn't know what was going on because they did. They just chose to ignore it. This book sets the record straight, and rightly so. It's like visiting the moon in 1969. It's scarcely possible for some to comprehend how Operation 200 was conceived and conducted unless you've actually been there. But it was, and there's a museum now at Zagen. Um, David Jason very kindly produced a, a splendid um, documentary about it. Of course, he is the, I believe, president of Bonner Command Association, I think, or, or active within that part of it. And um, it's a tribute again to him to open the story up to a new generation. Um, we will get some fascinating answers one day, I think, to complete the generous picture painted by Pearson of this most remarkable and likeable barrister from Lincoln's Inn, which is my own inn. Um, there's a nice memorial to him at Lincoln's Inn. Please go and see it. Uh, we put some poppies there each uh, November. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Pearson. The story is to be continued one day, if MI9 allow us. This is the book again. There's Roger on the front. I smile. Unfortunately, his aircraft going down at the back. On his first sortie as well. That's the back of the book. Let me just open it. Open up. This is the right in the middle. Family at war. This is the problem when he was in Prague. There's a lot of information about Prague. And then the betrayal and all the problems. Roger was really going underground, there we go. Roger was very unlucky, in my view, with a lot of things. Secret Agent. Again, very interesting stuff. As I said, it could be a good film one of these days, perhaps, I don't know. Then the actual business of trying to get home, and then the problems at the end when he gets out. Farewell to the tunnel, Harry, and then, of course, I don't want to deal with the last bit at all. Thank you very much, Simon Pearson. Uh, I shall treasure this book for the rest of my life. Uh, it's an important story for me, and I know for a lot of people that I have met. Um, take away the film and all the other stuff, and look at what you've really got. It's true courage, true heroism. Thank you. Bye-bye.